Merci, mes amis. Mais c'est à vous que je vais écouter. Isn't it wonderful that the great piano posture is also the great biomechanical posture for sitting? Much of it is about resisting gravity in the most economical way possible, as if evolution had bestowed humanity with a physical posture that allows for resting while being in high mental alert. Interestingly, The line of center of gravity crosses major articulations in a surprising display of alignment. It begins at the base of the skull, an articulation that can be found using the lobe of the ear as an axis reference. It continues through the shoulders, then the elbows, the hip joints, and the very bottom of the sitting bones both of which bear the weight of the upper body and can be readily felt by the sitting pianist. No, there is no coincidence in that the correct sitting position crosses these five cornerstones in piano playing. Here, the skeletal muscles are at the lowest level of tension and energy consumption. All articulations are free to move by voluntary command, including the very pillar that holds the weight, the vertebrae corum. Breathing is lighter and deeper, which is of key musical significance. Inadequate sitting reduces our energy and concentration. Because it's free of muscle tension, this sitting position allows for a clear and unperturbed feedback from the instrument. Piano feedback is made of vibrations that the relaxed pianist can notice through the fingers and through the pedal. Another benefit from the correct piano posture allows for a more effective self-detection of muscle tension. Identifying which muscles are tense can also give hints as to which technical deficiencies are to be addressed. But for piano playing, there are a few extra considerations given that the forearms and the hands remain parallel to the floor during most of the playtime. Because a pianist requires a vision angle to watch the keyboard, the hand will need to reach closer to the keys. Then, to avoid muscle tension due to upper arm disalignment, the pianist bends the upper body just a little until the arms hang vertically again. In this L position, the weight of the hand and forearm is easily maintained or managed by a heavy-duty muscle, the brachialis, and by a refined and very precise muscle, the brachioradialis. This is a comfortable position, which Chopin called floating over the keys. When the hand is busy playing on the keyboard, the non-hanging weight is transferred back and forth the keys, giving the pianist continuing support and the feeling that the effort is minimal. Leaning forward loads the fingers with more weight. Leaning backwards loads the finger with more weight.
Sitting too low also loads a finger with more weight. And so it does when sitting too high. Please note that piano playing is composed of body parts that support weight and of parts that hold weight. For instance, a forearm flexed in 90 degrees is not supported by any bone or any solid structure. It hangs in place maintained by muscles and ligaments at the elbow. Here, when the pianist is truly relaxed, a holding weight can be seen as a hanging weight. The same physics can be observed at the shoulder, where the upper arm hangs by similar tissues. In turn, the shoulders themselves are maintained in place by muscles and ligaments that attach at the cervical and occipital regions at the back of the head. Therefore, a relaxed and flexible pianist playing dynamics and pianissimo to forte could be able to feel that the upper limbs hang from this anatomical spot. On the opposite, while playing dynamics in fortissimo, however, the opposite train of forces from the elbow to the head will need to be held by muscles at the lower back. 